Take a look at yourself as the vast mirror of consciousness and notice everything that we experience in life is an appearance in this vast mirror of consciousness. And then look at the benefits. From the perspective of yourself as the vast mirror of consciousness, what problem do you have? Pain, pain is in the body. Unhappiness in the mind. If there is pain, don't take it upon yourself. Don't say, oh, I am in so much pain. I am not in pain. I am the vast mirror of consciousness in which pain is being experienced. <laughs> It's an appearance. Which is literally true. Literally true. That's the actual accurate description. Is there pain by itself? Is there even I by myself and my pain by myself? No, it's all in consciousness. And that consciousness was never in pain. Pain. How can consciousness have pain? Consciousness can illumine the pain in the body. Desire and frustration. In the vast mirror of consciousness, this wave of desire arose and it was not fulfilled. It was, there, there is a consequence reaction of frustration or anger or unhappiness. I am the same tranquil mirror of consciousness. Think about it this way. Forget the world for a moment. Drive away all worldly thoughts, all concern about the world, the people, about ourselves, about our own lives. Drive away all memories, forget what was there even one minute ago, the entire life, forget, complete amnesia. Then shut the senses. I'm not seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, anything. Absolute stillness. I'm still aware. And that awareness by itself, what does it need? Nothing. Without asking the mind, without asking memories, without asking the world, what does consciousness need? Nothing. What is consciousness afraid of? Without looking at the world, the mind, memory, senses, what is consciousness by itself afraid of? Nothing. What does it desire? Nothing. What are you waiting for as consciousness? Nothing. What problem do you have as consciousness? Nothing. Are you bored? No. No. <laughs> Interesting. So, and this is just a thought experiment. But when you actually look and stay with it, you'll begin to see it's a fact, not a thought experiment. Beyond all thought. Illumining all thoughts is that one consciousness. All right. One more last point, which is a very important point. I'll say that and wrap up. Shankaracharya makes it in his Dakshinamurti Stotram. Yasakshat kurute prabodha samaye swatmanam evadvayam. Who, you remember the man who was sleeping and dreaming. Now at the time of waking up, this one realizes the self as non-dual. We are coming to non-duality now. The self as non-dual. What does it mean? Imagine what happens when we wake up. When we wake up from a dream, we realize, oh, first of all, it was a dream. This is real. We sit up on the bed and think that. And then whatever we saw in the dream, whoever we saw in the dream, do they constitute an other to me, the dreamer? Are they countably? Suppose I saw a hundred people in the dream. When I wake up, what do I say? Were there a hundred people? I and a hundred others? A hundred and one? He said, no. In all my dreams, there was only one. What about all the other people? What about all the other things you saw, places you visited? They were not countable others apart from myself. I eat a cookie and I like it. In my dream, I eat three more. Do I wake up and say, oh, I've got to watch my sugar. I ate four cookies. We don't say that. We don't count the three dream cookies. So what we saw in the dream is not counted. Everything in the dream is not, is not a countable second. There's only one without a second, the dreamer, you the dreamer. So the dream, the contents of the dream are non-dual with respect to you. They are not a second. You see in what sense they're non-dual? They are you. Everything and everybody in the dream was you in fact. You means you the dreamer, the one who woke up. Similarly, everything reflected in the mirror Are there really countably many, many people, cars, streets, um, birds, um, uh, trees in the reflection in the mirror? Not at all. There's only a mirror. Only one thing, the mirror. So the mirror is non-dual. The, the city seen in the mirror is non-dual with respect to the mirror. There's no second thing there. Advaitam. Similarly in the lake, 
There aren't hundred trees and a mountain and birds. No, there's only one water and that water is non-dual with respect to the what was reflected in it. Because you can't deny it was a reflection. You saw something there. That's what you saw is not a second. It is that one thing appearing as an other. Similarly, in consciousness, in the vast mirror of consciousness, the entire universe appears, but as non-dual, not really as a second. There is nobody here who is not you. Nobody. Yeah. Every stranger, everybody who ever lived or will live, who lives living now, every human being, every plant, animal, every sentient being, every non-sentient being. And remember the very simple incident of the Holy Mother, Sharada Devi, in her simple village abode in Jairambati, in the small village in Bengal. And this lady was sweeping the village courtyard. And having swept it, she tossed the broomstick away. And the mother rushed in and said, What is this, my dear? Uh, don't do that. Even that broomstick has its own dignity and its place. And she carefully lifted it and put it in its place. The last thing, very last thing she said before her passing, she said to the women who were attending to her in her last hours, she said, the world is your own. There is no one here who is an other. Learn to make the world your own. Do not look upon the faults of others. If you must, look upon your own faults. If you must look, find fault, look upon your own faults. Because no one is an other. Make the world your own. Advaitam, non-dual. They are not a second apart from you. The mirror, the reflections are not a second apart from the mirror. They are the mirror. Though they appear to be houses and people and things like that. Similarly, this world, other people, they seem to be other, but they are that same one vast mirror of consciousness appearing as this person, and that person, and so on. Let me repeat that uh, beautiful verse. Um, the, in the vast mirror of consciousness, the entire range of objects in this universe appears as reflections just like trees reflected, you know, the trees on the shore reflected in a great lake. Swagyana darpane sphare samasta vastu jataya imasta pratibimbanti sarasiva tatadrume I'm reminded of a line from a poem by Aurobindo who wrote about his enlightenment, the, the eternal self, in a little poem. He says, what was it like? He says, it's the world drowned in an immortal gaze. Huh. That's a good way of putting it. Right now we are so absorbed in gazing upon the world, we are, we are absorbed in what we are seeing. You turn inwards into the seer. As the seer becomes, becomes pronounced, becomes clear, you begin to notice, instead of seeing what is reflected in the mirror, become aware of the mirror, even while the reflection is there. Become aware of the mirror. You will see the mirror will become predominant. And if you see what's there, you won't say it's a city, you will say it's a mirror. As the seer becomes prominent, seer becomes dominant, the world drowned in an immortal gaze. What is that immortal gaze? You are that immortal gaze. You are that limitless consciousness. So Vashishta's reply to Rama was, this very world you are seeing, it's not something that you can toss aside, or you should toss aside, or you need to toss aside. You are the very support of this world. First. Second, you are real, the world is an appearance. What is an appearance cannot affect you, Rama. Even while the kingdom and everything is appearing, it is, you are free of it. That's the implication. Why would you want to run away from this? Should not, because you are making a fundamental mistake, a, a philosophical mistake. And finally, you are non-dual consciousness. There is literally, when you say, I am Brahman, you are literally saying, there is nothing apart from me. So what is it that you are trying to give up? 